We often experience reality through this sphere at the top of our bodies called the head. But what's crazier is we can recreate this experience with technology. Last week, we created our first spatial audio experience using Apple's framework called Phase. But as you may have noticed, something critical was missing from this experience. You see, we experience sound through our head, which moves with us when we're rocking out to our favorite jam, and this changes the way we perceive the world around us. Using the Core Motion framework and the Apple AirPods Pro, we can apply this head tracking effect to the sound we want to perceive in the real world. And today, we're going to be doing just that with this audio 3D example in the cookbook. The Audio Kit Cookbook is an essential tool for iOS audio developers. It includes numerous audio examples to do just about everything. And the best part is it's made by open source devs who put their heart and care into this work. So please make sure to give it some support. Now the app does work with Bluetooth headphones. Today, as I said, we're gonna be using the AirPods Pro to perform head tracking. But before we do that, let's see what the baseline looks like. So if we go to mini apps, then we can click on this audio 3D and start playing some audio. Now, as we pan the audio around, you can see that it actually pans around our ears. And we can even use two fingers and drag up to change the elevation. Pretty cool, huh? The first step we need to do to enable this motion tracking is prompt the user to allow it. Just as every piece of data, we want to make sure that the user knows what we're doing. So to do that, we can go and add a property in the info.plist for the app. And this is where we'll show the prompt to the user and ask them if they want to allow this. So we'll say privacy and then we'll say motion usage description. So this is where apps would prompt you if they're going to use some accelerometer data, some camera data, because we are pulling from a device sensor. So we want to make sure the user knows that. So we can say we use motion data from your AirPods to track your head and pan audio. And boom, now we have our P-List property. The only framework we need to import is Core Motion itself. So we'll do that inside the Audio 3D recipe. Next, let's talk about something that will be important called a quaternion. It's a type for representing a measurement of attitude. That's basically the user's head rotation. And so for this quaternion, we're going to add a couple of fancy properties that will allow us to calculate some things. The first part of that is the axis. The axis defines the vector in space, in a 3D space, that's actually being rotated. And the angle describes the amount of rotation. Next, let's go down to the view model, which is the AudioKit 3D view model. And this is what supplies the data to our view to tell it to do stuff. What we want to do in here is create our headphone manager that manages the motion. So we can do private let headphone motion manager. And this is going to be equal to something called the CM headphone manager. And this is what's actually going to track the motion from the user's headphones or AirPods. Inside the view model, we'll add two functions. The first one is to start the headphone tracking. And the second one, if you can guess it, is to stop the headphone tracking. Next, we'll scroll down to the actual view that is presented. So this is what the user sees when the view loads. And when the view appears, we want to call that start head tracking function. And when the view disappears, we want to call stop headphone tracking. Next, we want to scroll back up and see if the headphones are actually available to start tracking. 
So how we can do that is we will say if headphone manager dot is motion available and headphone manager dot is motion active. And what we want to do is say if it's not already active, then we will do headphone motion manager dot start device motion updates. And this takes two things. The first thing it takes is the thread or kind of the sort of task manager that the operation is going to perform on. And mostly we want to do most things that aren't related to audio on the main thread. And the second thing it's going to take is a closure, which is going to take in the device motion. And this is an optional, so we got to be careful about that. And it's also going to take in an optional error. So we're going to say if let device motion equal the device motion. So we're basically saying if this exists, let's create a new device motion over here. Then we can print that device motion. Otherwise, if there's an error that exists, so if let error equal error, print the error and print its localized description. That will print out a description that's in the corresponding language which the user selects. And then stop headphone tracking is a lot easier. All we have to do is say headphone manager dot stop motion updates. And now we should have motion tracking. It's that easy. Now it's time for some fun. Let's hope this works. I'm gonna put my AirPods in so we can use the motion tracking. All right, nothing's crashed yet. So if we go into mini apps, then we go to audio 3D You'll notice it will ask us if we want to track our motion and fitness activity. <laughs> Has nothing to do with fitness, I guess, but... And then you could see we use motion data from our AirPods to track your head and pan audio. So let's go ahead and enable it. And now we can see that things are actually printing out to the console. How cool is that? The last thing we need to do today is figure out how do we actually get this motion data connected to our scene? Well, that's easy. We delegate. If you look carefully throughout the code, you'll actually find a class that would be the perfect person in real life to delegate this task to, the scene coordinator. So what we're gonna do is say CM headphone motion manager delegate. And this is gonna allow this scene coordinator to be able to pick up some of the tasks of updating the headphone motion to change the scene. Now, instead of having our view model update this headphone motion, let's delegate that task. So we can move down to the scene coordinator and actually give this thing an update motion handler. And this is an optional property. Next, we can add a device motion below that for our motion data. And of course, since this is optional, we'll also make the motion data optional. And this will be a little bit tricky later, but I'll show you how to get around it. Finally, since this class inherits from this NS object, we'll need to override its init method and have it update the headphone motion data. So inside this init method, that's where we'll actually set this function that updates the device motion, which is the device motion handler. And we'll pretty much do the same thing that we did up above where we set the motion data and the error and then we unwrap those and print if there's no data to process or if there's an error but if we get motion data then we don't print it we just assign it to our motion data now what happens if the user disconnects their airpods while using this motion data well when the user disconnects the motion data will actually stop streaming and because of that we want to add some functions that are handily included inside the delegate that will allow us to detect when the user disconnects the headphones. So we first have the headphone did connect function and we also have the function that says did disconnect. And inside the function that disconnects, we wanna set motion data to nil so that we don't get some weird data. And we also wanna do the same thing in our view model when the headphone tracking stops so that we don't access that motion data. 
So we could say coordinator dot motion data equals nil. Now, while we're at it, we may as well define the delegate. So what we can do is say headphone manager dot delegate is equal to our coordinator. And next, we also want to unwrap something else here. So we want to say if coordinator dot update device motion and we want to assign that to our update device motion and then we'll say if we can do that then we're going to run all this stuff and instead of running this block here now we can use our update device motion so we say instead of this we can use the same function run it on the main and then with the handler coordinator dot or actually we can just use this since this is a value so we'll say update device motion and there we have it why did we do all this well because again we wanted to use all of this data to control the scene so what we can actually do here is inside this renderer function in the scene coordinator we can paste all of our quaternion transforms that transform this thing called the point of view. And what the point of view is, is that is the camera inside the scene that actually looks at the sphere. And we can rotate that camera by using the rotation that's measured. Now this is kind of interesting. So here we're taking the amount of rotation and assigning that to our quaternion angle. And if you remember, we added some fancy functions back in the beginning that can define all of this angle and axis. And once we assign the amount of rotation, all we need to do is tell the point of view what vector is actually on the axis of rotation. And since the Z is being mirrored because your iPad is being shown back to you, we wanna actually multiply this by negative one. Wow, that was a lot. I don't know about you, but I'm getting excited to try this thing out. So let's go. Now what I find best is you'll notice we actually haven't calibrated anything. So when the sensors start running, the scene's gonna be kind of messed up. So what works best is you wanna hold your iPad in front of you and look forward for just a few seconds. And look at that, we got motion tracking. like a Mozart. In summary, today we learned that we can use the core motion framework and extend it to our AirPods. Basically these things that were almost about as much as a VR headset, but hey, they sound great and they're really cool and tiny. Hope I don't lose it. But if you enjoyed this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, comment down below what you think. And with that, I will see you guys next week. Peace.